Hoppa! Hop, hop, ho! Welcome everybody back to Stavish World. 904-800 Stav, call in if you if you need us to help you solve all your life's problems. We have our first repeat guest, my pal, one of my one of my best friends in com. You know what? I'm gonna take off the in comedy, Mateo. Just, in just general, one of my best boys. That's high praise. You know, we've. It's funny because when you meet someone through comedy, you're like, oh yeah, I know him through comedy. And it's like if you look at the years, it's like, oh, it's I've known Mateo almost a decade. Yeah, now. <laughs> it's like we've been like we've in this in this very apartment. We've seen each other's penises probably six years ago, seven years ago. Yeah, so that's I think a, seven years ago. Seven years ago, yeah. Good for us. We've gone through so many different, so many different of my looks. No mustache, completely bald. Yeah, you you've gone through, <laughs> gone through a, a huge. I've I've almost remained yeah. the same Mario character. Yes, I'm yes, like, yes. I'm Luigi. Traditional. Yeah, I'm the character they have to keep. Uh, you know, they got to make new action figures of me. I have more hair. You're classic. That's right. That's more hair, it. which is nice. More oh. hair, more, bo- more Botox. That's, I <laughs> yeah, got more. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much what I have. What would happen if me and Eldis got Botox, do you think? You guys would look very great. You think we'd look good? You have good skin. We talked about this that's on the right. plane that you have, like... You were like the one of the one of all the things that God has done for me. The only thing, me. the only solid God did my bo- the rest of my body big mess. You he are gave not me a great, big mess. Great you look skin. great. Thank you so much. You were much. so fashionable in Paris. Thank you. That's right. And we had to have Mateo back, of course, uh, because we need to do a we need to do a a, re, uh, uh, a, a recap. recap of that. I was literally both of us were literally Fashion Week models, and I wanted to talk about it with somebody that was there in Paris. Shout out to Kid Super. He had a bunch of comedians out there, and it just feels like crazy to just do that yeah. and not, you know, and not least, talk about at, it. At least mention it a little bit on the pod. Of course, we'll get to your questions. You know, we'll we'll help we'll help some incels. You were great. You and Marie were so great on the first episode. You guys I, were on. The anyway. problem is when Marie is anywhere, I'm I just. I'm like so entertained. Yeah, she's that, like I'm like oh I should say something. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I'm like, I fucking love her. Marie makes me laugh so hard. It's true, and it's hard not. It's it was a very we interrogated Marie. We told her to you know start getting flown out instead of paying for her own vacations. Yeah. It was a we it was a more Marie centric. But now we get to focus on you. We get I'm so boring. No, I, <laughs> you're you're very, you're not boring at all. You're a, you're a hilarious. Mateo is one of the most. Eldest, I'm sure, I don't know if you know this. How many skills Mateo has is so annoying. <laughs> you, you can fucking he's a, he can paint like he just every time he can sing, he can do comedy. I've seen he's, the cooking videos. The cooking like videos. Those. He's jacked. Some good looking, good pasta. penis. By the way, folks, I saw it through the corner of my eye a couple times. <laughs> nice, nice piece on this man right here. He's Thank got you. it all. Um, I am Italian. <laughs> he's Italian. I know plenty of, of uh, little peened Italians. I'm sure you, you do. do. Oh. I think so. Sorry, scusa. <laughs> <laughs> Mi dispiace. That, that is interesting that you have so much uh, national pride that you pretend that everyone has a big penis in Italy. <laughs> all, all the dicks I've encountered in Italy have been great. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So if, if anyone's the expert here, uh, well, that's true. That's true. You know, but no, I thanks. That's but nice of you. Do you think it self selects for the guys with enough confidence to approach you? In Italy, have large every man thongs. has confidence in Italy. That's true. It doesn't That's matter what they look like or what they do; yeah. they all have this. They exude the same <laughs> amount of confidence. True. That is, it is the most unearned confidence that people <laughs> has had. They're like they just they're like look around, look what we do. We yeah. build this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is like Greeks are like that too, where they have so much unearned confidence because of how successful we were four thousand years ago. <laughs> Like, Italy and Greece both have been nothing but, like, a mess for the last hundred years. Yes. Italy, we're literally like, you know who's cool? Hitler. We're going to we're gonna partner up with him. You guys have that added element to it. It's like Greece. Do you ever hear Mike Vecchio's joke about that? No, no. He's like, everyone forgets about, please, Mike Vecchio, and please find me goes. Everyone yes. forgets that Italy was a part of, you know, uh, Hitler's side. He's like, but I think we're forgiven because of our food. People are like, hey, weren't you guys on the other side? Yeah, but look at this chicken cacciatore. Yeah, that is it's true. Like, we're forgiven. Japan. Too sushi, come on! I'm, we're I all think in. with Italians too. Like I would notice when we were when we were in Paris. I'm used to going. To, you're used to Greece. I'm used to Italy. Yeah, they are sort of comparable in yeah, Europe sure. as like I would say chaos so. and absolute chaos. Parking chaos. on the sidewalk. Oh. You know cars I mean? in every direction absolutely and there's no distinguish like nothing distinguishes the difference between a sidewalk and a street in no Italy. mountain Just, roads that i don't know if, if italy's like this greece everyone's driving drunk as shit 
<laughs> everyone's drunk and everyone's on these winding roads. Not even the the thought of no, a guardrail. No, no, no. Like, and, and no the, mirror. No mirror, no nothing. They'll honk when they're coming around the corner fast. <laughs> That's the only safety measure. And literally, I knew drunk 14-year-olds that would drive like mopeds up these things at like 2 a.m., and it's like, this is just, you guys aren't scared? I guess when you've lived in a, a, a culture that old, Italy and Greece, it's like, ah, yeah, what's life? What's life? Our uh, life is completely uh, expendable. I couldn't get over the, like, we, and we'll get to this in a second, but just the fact that we were walking around Paris, I'm so used to Italy. I was texting this guy that I was briefly dating who's Parisian, and I said, mm. your streets, I'm like, everything is so organized and, and he goes well yeah you're italian yeah <laughs> he's like you guys are a mess it's so weird how different europe really is and how close everything is yeah like i always had this idea because again all i did all i did was go to greece and then you look at a map and you see how close london and england and like i've been reading a lot of medieval history shit just out of, i don't Me know lady. I, I like i like to read shit that's gonna put me to bed honestly yeah so i picked it because i thought it'd be boring and then i kind of got into they it. they were also drunk all the time everyone's drunk as hell everyone lived in in a little hut with their fucking donkey shit. yeah literally indoors the animals and like but it's so interesting to me that like most of european history french and english in particular is kings just taking turns taking lands from each other because they're mm -hmm. right next door to each other mm -hmm. and it was like how can they be so different? How can these cultures be so different when they're this, they're like a, a nut hair away from each other? Yeah, it doesn't... And everything is is completely... Italians and Greeks, 100%. It's the same, like, you know, chaos. It's everything is the same. France, France has that snooty, yeah. the snootiness that they never really got over. They still look down on England for, like, like the first, the first kings of England spoke French, and just looked at the English as they're dumb, basically like they're slaves. <laughs> they're like, we're gonna take, we're gonna make these dumb, d dumb British like you know farm for us while we you know get silks and linens and all that kind of shit and have gay sex in our palaces. Well, that part I can. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds pretty good, huh, pal? <laughs> Silk and gay sex. I don't know. But okay. fr the French somehow have maintained that like type of superiority. It's in the sound of the language. It's crazy. It's Alors, so. Alors aujourd'hui, je pense que je suis en passant. Like it's, it's like it's, it's insane. Yeah, I, I almost wonder sometimes if, like, a language dictates a lot of how a society, like, cultural mannerisms. Does that make yeah, any yeah. sense? It does. You know, because there is, like, if I think about Italy, it's very expressive, it's yeah. very loose, it's very, you know, so mm -hmm. the, the the vibe of Italy is so much different than... Germany is the best example of this, right? Oh, my God, they're just, just it's like living in a fridge. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the yeah. opposite of Mediterranean. It's crazy, and and everything is, like, loud, and, like, it's it feels like you're getting yelled at. It, you're either getting yelled, but sternly, sternly, not like with passion. Yeah. Like you've messed up at your job, not like I just caught you cheating. Like there's a difference between, um, uh, mein Herr, ich habe eine Frage für dich. And someone being like, Senor, my uno <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was speaking Spanish for a second. He uno tomate per te. Every Italian man is almost to tears uh, whenever they have a, <laughs> when they have like a request of you. It's like they can be brought to tears so easily. Yeah. Uh, from beauty or from a minor annoyance or just needing, you know, needing help. <laughs> But so, can I tell you how I got the invite to Paris? Because yeah, I was a late, I was the day you before. Were, and I didn't want to tell this to you because we, so. I replaced uh, Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's Damn, an Mike Tyson was supposed to be there? Yeah. I didn't even know that, dude. Holy. I went, that oh, was yeah. the, That's what everyone said. Wow, you're right. Because I was yeah. like, well, most people do think of me when they can't get Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm like Kathy Griffin. I'm like, when back in the day, she's like, I have a dress ready to go. If, some, if someone drops out in Hollywood Squares, I'm in. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't give a shit. A free flight to Paris on a private jet. It I was, was literally loved. like a Puma the, jet. A yeah. Puma, the, the Puma, a $60 million jet. Beyonce has been on the jet. Which there's something humbling knowing that Beyonce pissed in that. It is true. Beyonce. Yeah. Beyonce's you know I mean? ass, my ass cheeks and Beyonce's ass cheeks were on the same, same toilet. But now, I was doing a little more damage, if I had to guess. <laughs> After a whole weekend of eating baguettes and butter. I had seven croissants so in much two steak. days. I feel like we had steak. Yeah. Yeah, it was wild. Was, I'm not a big steak guy. I don't know why I ordered a steak on our way there. I'm a big steak guy, <laughs> and it was good. But it did definitely, it definitely fucked me up for the rest of the trip. Eldest could have gone, too. I offered Eldest to come, but he had to be with his girlfriend on the one week off I he gets a year. I Costa Rica. Yeah. I took my only vacation for over a year with my girlfriend. 
Wow. <laughs> okay, you go to the romantic city of Paris with my friend Stav here. <laughs> we had a great time. No, ben, it, looked, it looked awesome. Benny Butt Cheeks replaced you. Shout out to everybody. If you guys Love don't ben. know, Ben O'Brien, another member of the uh, uh, the creative director of Stavi Baby Enterprises. Uh, he w- he came. We had a great crew. It was you know me, you, Ben, Santino, Vaughn. Uh, Theo Vaughn was on the on the jet with us. That was great. There was the four of us sitting there sharing a steak. It was awesome. Chatting. It was insane. <laughs> like it truly was insane. And part of me was like, damn, private jets are so bad for the world. And then I was like, wow, they're gonna take the jet with or without me. <laughs> but also, what is it? What is it? Having, if I'm not on it, you know, having kids is bad for the world. That's so true. Like, I I'm not gonna have kids. <laughs> so let me have this one private jet. I love you that. Son of a yeah. bitch. But yeah, I, I would. Gay guys like, just get to smoke, you know, they're just like oh, polluting. And- can you imagine <laughs> if we could smoke on that plane? That I mean, I, when I leave this planet, I'm leaving a, a, a carbon fingerprint, not a, a footprint. But I, I will say, I was in the middle of hooking up with this Brazilian guy. And we're like, like shirts are coming off. Oh, yeah. And I, my phone is buzzing. Like, and I'm like, oh my God. It's, and I could tell it was a text. I'm like, is someone dying? Yeah. I was like, um, uh, perdona, man. I yeah, have to yeah. look at my phone. And it was Mark, for who works for Mark Gagon. Gagon, Gagon. I don't yeah, know how to say yeah, his name in French. I don't either. Uh, saying, can you go to Paris tomorrow? There'll be a flight that takes you. <laughs> it's a private jet. It's for a fashion show. It's for kids who were Louis Vuitton. Yeah. And I was like, what is this witchcraft? I was like, yeah. I, was, I literally said, I'll call you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I had sex. I have some cock to suck, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> and I respect that, Mateo. Yeah, I mean, priorities. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But then I was like, well, they want me. So, you know, uh, so I called him and he was like, uh, Santino's coming and Santino was at the cellar. So I went down to the cellar and I was like, are you going? He's like, yeah, man, go. So I was like, okay, I'll go. And then thank God you were like, get your agent involved. Because I was going to try and do it myself. I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. okay, yeah, I'll get my agent involved. No, nah, dude, you're still, you're still cum drunk. You can't be doing, you can't <laughs> be drunk. <laughs> Can't be doing emails at a time like that. No, you especially because my fingers will stick to the <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> so good for you for applying to any business with a hard penis. There's no way I'm so useless. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, I need to bust first before I have any discussion whatsoever. Uh, I mean, I'm so used to it. I'm like, hold on a second. Yeah, I do like that. I don't feel like you've ever hooked up with any man that I know of that is does not have. That is even an American citizen. This one was definitely not. None yeah. of them. All my boyfriends are looking for green cards. Yeah. And I'm happy to give it to them. Yeah. This is it right now. Come find me, baby. Green card marriage. Nice. The, that's, that's the name of it. my book. Yeah. That would a be green nice. card marriage. But it was awesome. I mean, the, the, if a private jet takes you to... Oh, I actually have a funny story. I fell to asleep. It was great. I, there was a bed. We had beds, beds. all the way there. Me and Andrew Santino shared a bed, which was yeah. all so gay and so cute. <laughs> we were da- him and I were dating you fully for were. that for those two days. It was really cute. <laughs> we walked the. Um, we get to Paris and then we're in this car and it's it's so funny because when you fly international, usually it feels like you're international. Now you get off, everything's in French. You have to go through customs. Yeah, not, yeah. Like there's kind of the adjustment, but this was just like. Some, a car to a plane. Some no fresh guy looked at our passports. Just like, all right, you're good. Yeah, BMV new. Yeah, and then we're and we're like, oh, we're in Paris right now. And then, <laughs> and then, then we were in the car. And we're like, they had like the stars in the car. And I was like, the, you know what I'm talking about? The yes, roof of the car. Had, and the car had these like weird like light up little. And I know, was so like delusional. I was I thought it was like a fever dream. I'm like, yeah, am I yeah. in Paris with Andrew Santino, Theo Vaughn, and Stavros <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, with yeah, stars yeah. in a car yeah. like. Man, it was fucking... Some Moroccan guy driving us silently. It was awesome. Oh, he hated us. He definitely did. And then we had a big breakfast and tried to stay up. I stayed up the whole day. Um, we were only there. We literally got there Friday. Yeah. And we left Sunday. Mm-hmm. The show was... And so we just kind of stayed up all Friday. And then the show happened Saturday, and that was crazy. Uh, There's no... The fitting, of course. We had to go get fitting. Yeah, how was your fitting? I want to hear about, like, what... It was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was interesting because they're definitely... I will say this. <laughs> Shout out to Kid Super for having us. Uh, um, but the whole fashion... And, and he was very... Uh, he wanted to have me. But it was so funny because I I talked to... His name's Colm. And he... We, like, FaceTimed. And he was like... Oh, dude, I just saw your measurements. And he was like, he was like, where do you buy clothes? And it's like, you asked me, man. You asked me to be in this fucking thing. Who, who says that? Where do you buy clothes? He was, like, he was like, where do they even manufacture clothes? As if America is in the fattest city in the history of existence. But yeah, it was so funny because they, we were doing the, we were doing the, um, the, the we were doing the fitting and they literally had to make, he just straight up didn't have tracksuits that were big enough for me. So his extra large, he had to add 
add a little bit of a medium to finish my tracksuit. So if you look at the back of the tracksuit jacket, it's like you can clearly see the, there were two tags. There was an extra large and a medium next to it. <laughs> Shout out to Lucy, the girl that the she she um she was sewing it. She was making clothes. That was another cool thing about going to fat because like obviously what the fuck do we know about fashion nothing it was cool though i gotta say it, you felt awesome because it's just like oh, you're the coolest person there all these hot girls are tending to you constantly they're like oh does this look good they're snipping like the small your clothes have to look perfect they're doing your you know they're doing your makeup your some, hair your makeup so, yeah a french girl who could barely speak english uh gave me a haircut <laughs> she, <laughs> she trimmed my split ends <laughs> before it happened and i was like this fucking rocks dude when i got my fitting i was the last one to get fitted mm. so Everyone had gone before me. I walk in, and I have no idea who anybody is. And he goes, we've been waiting for you all day. <laughs> and I go, what do you mean? And then I saw their board with, like, everyone's pictures. And mine was, you know, all my shirtless yeah, pictures. Yeah, like, yeah. we're just waiting to see if you actually looked like this. Yeah, yeah, And I was yeah. like, here I am. And then yeah. there's that guy that, like, like the stylist. I don't mm -hmm. really know what, like... Everyone yeah. sort of has a, a title, but it, whatever. Yeah. So he he kept like he was, it was like a it was like a movie. He would yeah, like that guy was on, cool. Yeah. No. He had, put this yeah. 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 Off, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. all right. And then at one point he goes because they're all straight, which was shocking. He goes, yeah. did you know that Tyra Banks invented America's Next Top Model? And I go, do you think I turned gay yesterday? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that was a big one for like so at my fitting. Tyra was like right at right before me, and that that in, that's like this is a fever dream. Look how cool you look. You look so cute. Uh, me, you, and Santino. We but, are a cool little crew. But I was also, um, it was also funny because I, I even did the joke where I was like, this is crazy because I used to beat off to America's Next Top Model. <laughs> <laughs> <That's what laughs> and to be fair, to be respectful to Tyra, it was not most, it was not to her because she was the host of the operation. Of and a judge. But they met, yeah, but they made those bitches do some wild shit. That show was <laughs> so insane. First of all, I mean, they had an episode where these girls all weigh 20 pounds. Yeah. And then Tyra puts all of them in those giant wind tunnel machines and oh, she's like, yeah. you have to, they have no training. Then yeah. they're like, okay, you have to not only flow but while winds are coming at you at 130 miles an hour, be sexy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. these like frail women are just flying around. They yeah. can barely keep their bodies. And Tyra's like, fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, this yeah. is insane. And they all just went right back to being baristas the second the show was over. <laughs> one, one time I saw one of them in a, a, a Chili's commercial as a host. <laughs> and my instinct at first thought was like, oh, at least she's working. Yes, yeah, she's, working. she's working. But Tyra, I have to say, was the easiest, she nicest rules. person to talk to work with it was like awesome uh, she was on time she hit everything i would have assumed she, she would have been like a huge bitch <laughs> you know you just uh, well you just not not because of her but because it's like insanely famous mm. like hot model mm -hmm. like you know retire come out of retirement hasn't been the fashion week like she's doing all this other shit i just would have assumed she would have felt rightfully better than us and she, she totally, is better than and us. she is but you know <laughs> absolutely that's what i mean like and she would have been like polite but like completely kept herself but she was like Great, got yeah, a couple great like, chats. Yes, it was wild. We dude. were all sitting there in the lobby. We were ready to go to the after party, and she comes up. I think with her husband, and she was like, "Guys, I just went to a Five Guys." She's yeah, like, "I got yeah, a yeah. chocolate shake with the bacon bits in it. Yeah, it was yeah, so yeah. good." And I was yeah. like, "Who are you?" Shout out to Tyra. It made me really want to get Five Guys. I just love that. that but instead, the, we went to the after party. The, Not it, bad. It truly, the fashion world and the comedy <laughs> world. They are there are no overlaps. We're all the comics are back there. We're in one of the biggest fashion shows. The this the theater only fit a thousand people. Six thousand people were trying to get in. They <laughs> yeah, blocked yeah, the streets. Yeah, yeah, a girl yeah. broke her arm trying to get in. <laughs> Security was there. The yeah, police were Kodak called. Kodak Black was like, there. Kodak was, Black. A couple and, NFL players oh, were there. It was and wild. We're back there like ugh. I'm like fuck. I, what uh, joke am I gonna? do? I need do? to do three. I'm gonna. Right, I'm gonna start Dress with the like beating arms. We just, you know yeah. what I mean. Like, we made fun of the clothes. The yeah. clothes were I, honestly. I told him I want that. Ja I want that jacket. I also I need that jacket. Where's my track? You made it for me, motherfucker. Not anymore. Calm if you're listening. There is no one fatter. You made it specifically for my fat body. <laughs> I deserve the jacket. <laughs> Give me the half medium, half XL. But it was it was so it was very interesting to watch those two worlds mix because when we went out there, the fashion world didn't even know really what to make of us. We were yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we came out with 
jokes. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. great. And I got an, a standing ovation from Kodak Black. Yeah, yeah. I he sang, loved the I, singing. I did because the, <laughs> yeah. well, they said to me, they're like, "You sing? Can you sing? Can you sing?" And I was like, "I wasn't planning on it, but I mean, I yeah. can." So I mean, that's an old joke. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. way back in the day. But I was like, "Whatever. It's a theater. It's Paris. No one yeah. knows who the shit I am. I'll of just course. go sing." So as I'm like, "Homie, oh, Bobby," <laughs> like literally, Kodak Black in the front row stands up with his baby. His baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "That's interesting," yeah. but. It was, I mean, I afterwards was such a cool experience. And I, I didn't realize how much I really enjoyed being dressed up in weird, fun clothing and that world. It is a very intoxicating yeah. world. Yeah, I really, it really truly was. It was like, and I mean, I guess it's different because truly for me, the thing was like, all these hot women are like pampering you. So there was definitely like an element like there wasn't enough gays. I was really upset about yeah, it. There yeah, really yeah, was yeah, not yeah. enough gays. The, back it there. should have been a bunch of twinks for you. Uh, I'm not someone of twinks. You know, but what you mean? know, like but, a muscle. But are muscle guys doing makeup and shit? Of course they are. They're doing hair, makeup. All right, what, I'm what, sorry. What is this? We're not. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but they're lifting weights. They are. When do they have time? I always. I, oh, this is such a tacky joke, but it was like years ago. I was like, I was like, gay hey, men look the most athletic, but we really we would walk into a gym and couldn't tell the difference between a baseball and a football. We were yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. Know. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you looked. can move. You but there was this the one weight. guy who was interviewing us. I think he was from Spain. The thing I love about France and Paris is, is very like if you speak a bunch of languages, everyone's gonna speak something. Yeah. And so he was like, he was like, he was gay. He was like, we have very big fans of you in Spain. And, yeah. and, and I was like, are you or are yeah. you hitting on me right now? Because yeah. you're the only gay I've talked to in yeah. the past two days. It was wild how there weren't more gay dudes. I was kind of upset about it it was yeah. like i was look i was hope i was hoping yeah i was on grinder <laughs> how'd it go nothing um gr salut well everyone says salut in french but it keeps uh, by a little dyslexic i look at it and i keep thinking everyone's just calling me a slut and like mm, how do they know me yeah yeah yeah, yeah these yeah, strangers yeah. being like you slut and are like they i'm interested in europe are they slut what's the grinder culture in europe the grinder is the here, same everywhere okay. but it's a different language i see Cause here, you'd like literally. It's like, oh, I'm at the same grocery store with this guy. Maybe I'll suck his dick in the frozen food aisle. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a shame because you didn't get sucked off or suck anyone off. In I was Europe. talking to this one guy who was very handsome, but he was working at a bar, and he's like, "Well, I get off at four thirty in the morning." I'm like, well, we're flying the next day. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think we got home at three thirty. I was like, I was so tired. Star Wars and I got a little high at the we did. after party, and then we got I got the world's worst ravioli at some twenty four <laughs> yeah, hour yeah. diner. Me, you and Santino, <laughs> we, we truly ended the night like comics because it was like Roddy Rich and, and Kodak Black were going to be at the after party but it was like 3 a.m. and they were it wasn't even a hint of them being there no. I think they probably played at like 5 or something yeah. and we were like we're fucking leaving we're yeah. tired like, and we gonna... literally ended the night at a diner I had a fucking chicken me and Santino had chicken sandwiches and you had ravioli and we were just fucking hanging out I was high the cheese there was that gay guy that good. came up to you oh <laughs> my was... god I forgot about that <laughs> Um, and I use uh, Matteo Lane, and yeah. Stavros goes, where can we get 24-hour food? I was like, my friend, where can we eat around here? Not even just acknowledging <laughs> him. No, hello. Just from his phone, looked up. Yeah, hey, where can we get food? He's yeah. like, um, there's a place over there. I think you can go. That guy was so taken aback, bro. I was like, Matteo's not going to fuck you. I need a sandwich. Let's get the fucking work, pal. And I was like, au revoir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I a lot of times there's situations like comics you work for, especially at our stage in our career, yeah. we're thrown a couple really cool bones and you can but easily. But this one was like. This one was. Uh, I appreciated every second of it. I yeah. was like the, the flight, the hotel, the croissants, and then our little walk, you, me, Ben, and Andrew cute. just we walking the, the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. Tower. It was so cute. It was, it was really adorable. Shout out to... We, we got to go back. If you need more models, folks, me and Mateo, we're, we're, here. we're available. We're we are, ready to go. And we have a portfolio together. We do. We're in vogue. <laughs> so We have been in vogue. Where's Put us next, in your thing. We need to do a video, and we should bring our, our guys of me with you in Italy, yes. and then... Me with you in Greece. A hundred percent. Because I think that that would be... A hundred percent. And I can't believe you've not been to Italy before. I, I know. It's... I mean, it's just... I mean, I'm sure you feel that... Well... I, I do. I know what you I mean. You feel that's, the same way where it's like, look, I, it's right there, but I'm in Greece. I know. That's My how My family's I feel. here. Like, I want an extra day in Greece. I don't want to go to Greece where they speak Italian. Right. Because parts of... The parts that I would go to are like, you know... Although I will say I do really want to see Rome, but the same... That's how Athens is too, where it's like all the history, all the shit around there, but... I got to go to Italy. I want to go see Rome. Um, it is. It's so. It, what, one thing that is really interesting to me is how the food 
is so different. Like, there is not a hint no. of, like, like yeah, we have, like, spaghetti. Like, if anything, the Greek spaghetti stuff is, like, uh, it's all seafood-based. Like, right. it's, like, you know, yeah, they do, like, a shrimp or, like, a seafood. They do a real good sh- seafood, uh, you know, sort of just spaghetti. They call it astaco macaronada, like, lobster macaronia. macaronia Wait, how do you say just, lobster? Astacos. Okay, we say ar- argosta. Argosta. Lobster tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but we don't have, like, there's no, like, the pizza in Greece is horrendous. <laughs> and it's so funny where you're, like, because what it is is, like, it's the pizza in Greece, It they don't just go, let me go next door and see what they're doing. It's it, it, Italian food, like, processed through American mass culture. To Greece. To back to Greece. Damn. So it's, like, you see... You see, literally, I've seen, like, shitty bread with, like, a weird Greek-specific cheese and, like, tomato sauce, that they like, unflavored tomato sauce. Oh, or you'll get, like, shitty Domino knockoffs, like, that level of, like, pizza. It's, it's truly fucking crazy. The influence with, you know, the Mediterranean usually shares food. Rice, yeah. hummus, pita, yeah. ch- you know, whatever. But Italy, for some reason... It, it is in the center of the Mediterranean Sea, and it covers the north and the south of it. Yeah, and it has almost zero. I mean, it does have influence, like in Sicily, they eat couscous because of North Africa. Yeah, or like there's from because the, Arabs used to exactly. live in Sicily, so there's a lot of like in our arancine and the rice and stuff. But generally speaking, it's like what other country eats pasta five days a week? It's fucking wild. Like that never occurred to, again. That's what always blows my mind. Looking at Europe, it's like wow. And also, just go, Italy and Greece are so close. And in ancient times, it's like they were the same country. Same country. It was like it was like you know it was called Magna Graecia at first, and then once it became the Roman Empire. And then what's interesting to me is like Greeks for a while, like the new, the Greek identity based on ancient Greece is so fake. Like even in ancient Greece, everyone considered themselves a member of their city, mm-hmm. not of Greece, right? Mm-hmm. They they were Greeks, but they were like, you know, whatever. That's Italy, the kingdom yeah. of Naples, exactly. Sicily, yeah. And so it's so funny that these these weird identities because Greek food um like yeah, it's like you think of the skewer, you think souvlaki, you think gyro, you think all that stuff. It's all grilled and it's like fresh and it's like potatoes, not really no pasta. Ugh, lemon potatoes. So it's like it's just so fucking weird that we're so close to each other. We gotta we gotta go do it. We gotta do that, and we gotta well, also say, do Baltimore say, and Chicago. Oh, that'd be fantastic. We gotta do the America version and then the fucking international version. I would love Baltimore pizza. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll take it to get crabs, pal. But they say I've had, uh, crabs are I've had those. Um, but yeah. the the worst was scabies. Um, but <laughs> the, scabies. Uh, the, you went back in time and fucked the pirate. I did. <laughs> He put his peg leg in your ass. <laughs> but he was <laughs> Brazilian. <laughs> Suck his dick. <laughs> the pirates. <laughs> Get the balls. The parents <laughs> telling you what to do. But he's also like, like it's going to itch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A Brazilian pirate, huh? That wooden leg looks different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's circum- The leg is circumcised. <laughs> the, leg- <laughs> the leg bottom is a circumcised dick. Yeah. <laughs> But it, it, but I will say like the Greeks and Italians. Every time I meet Greek people, they always say una faccia una razza, yeah, like, yeah, same yeah. face, same race. There's yeah, a lot of yeah. cultural similarities, and I think they did this uh, a survey. Like, what's the closest culture to Italian culture? And the top three was like Greek and then Mexican. And so mm-hmm. you know, it's like the, the sort of like. Well, wait, I don't. I know Greek history, like whatever. But it's like. You guys must have also been the Ottoman Empire must have been in Italy too, right? Or no? Do you know? Um, I don't know. You don't know. I Not don't know anything. anything. I, I know about Rome is that it was like two. Well, the story they say in Italy is you'll see like Ramus and Remus, yeah, yeah. like two Ron, kids yeah. sucking on the wolf. The so wolf, there, there's yeah. two kids sucking on a wolf all over Rome. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah. kind of jarring. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, really? They have that imagery. Every the Romulus and Remus. Oh my god, it's like on relief paintings and stuff like that. But um, yeah, the Romans basically enslaved the Greeks to do mm-hmm. all of their work, all their yeah. art, all their structure, yeah, all of they their stole our whole flow. They did. They stole we stole everything that you guys did and then we adv- it was like an you yeah. guys were like a Nokia and then we were like the iPhone. Let's like- relax with that. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I would say that we kinda we were the iPhone one <laughs> yes, and you guys right. you guys were like, it's new and he just added a button. You know what I mean? Well, we, did, like- we, we had the aqueducts, which yeah, were yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. And like yeah, yeah. but no the Greeks 
Greek uh, Greek history to me is more interesting. But it's um, not that Italian history is not interesting. I gotta look like, at. I'm. I'm. Fi- I should look into more Italian. history Way more stuff. brutal. Yeah. I just because I'm wondering because it's like it's so clear that the Greek, the influences were. Uh, you, you you see the Turkish and the like Middle Eastern influences in our food. It's like a spin. It's yeah, like we like really the Greeks don't like to hear that. Huh? Greeks don't like hearing that. I know, but that's I know they <laughs> they hate joking. they hate hearing it, but it is reality. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, and if you think, because like the Greek actually, when you look at traditional Greek dishes like a uh, pasticcio, it's like there is some macaroni stuff, mm-hmm. or like there is some like casserole stuff, but it's all like villager, and there is more tomato food based stuff. So you see the the influences and in, like the like almost villager northern cuisine where it's like you can see where it's like yours is tomato and pasta ours is like tomato and like vegetable based stuff but I, I just wonder where the you know how the Turks must have not fucked your asses the way they fucked ours well it I'm was <laughs> the Arabs uh, ruled Sicily in southern Italy for a while and then it was the Spanish and then I think it was the then the Italians uh, so it, it's yeah. been it's, you know All Sicily over. is a little more I think in little, common with it's, it has way more in common with Greece for yeah. sure yeah island we, life and yeah yeah the feels that way the like it looks similar is this interesting to your listeners fuck them is you, it? they'll okay, take I hope it it's interesting they'll take it um, but Paris was great I had yeah. such a good time I I. I loved it I loved eating croissants and speaking French it and was great it was just a good time. What was your first... How about this? Uh, so we'll keep getting to know you more. What was your first time in Europe? When was the first time you went? I was 15. Okay. And I went to go visit Sicily. I went to go to nice. visit family and Now, were you friends. were you a closeted Michaels employee at the time? Uh, I was very gay. <laughs> yeah, okay. But yeah. luckily, they can't detect it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You just look like any so guy in Italy. I just look like any guy. You I were wearing so... capris. <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing capris. I was wearing capris. They were, and at that time, they were wearing, I remember my cousin was wearing yeah. capris. Oh, my God, that's so funny that you said that. And I thought it was so cool. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, my God, I'm in capris. I'm yeah. like fashion. Maybe I'm not gay. I'm just Italian. I, that was my, that was literally my, like, like my trying to come to terms with it. It's like, I'm I'm just Italian. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. Oh, that's so funny. Wow, you really read my mind. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this got dark. That's so so you were so you were not, but you were like you were still just you hadn't you were still closeted and you were like, Yeah, this is just I, the I culture. didn't come out until I was eighteen and then even then, like at my we have family friends in Messina mm-hmm. and I would stay with them because they're my family lives in the middle of Sicily in a, in a town called Montevago, which is okay. north of Agrigento. Uh, which actually Agrigento is very interesting. They have Greek Parthenons from Greek settlements before oh, Athens. And it's that. fascinating to go there and see them because they're really Maybe well. Maybe I gotta go to Sicily. That's how I'll start. Sicily. No, you should start with Rome. Start with Rome. You need right, to start with right. Rome. You're right. Um but Anyways, I so I would go stay with family friends in in Messina because it's like beaches and young kids and stuff, and uh, it, 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 I I remember like it. it like everything looked so gay, but it's not <laughs> yeah, gay. Yeah, yeah, like you yeah, would yeah, go yeah. to the beach, everyone's in a speedo, speedo. and doing the YMCA dance. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, there's no iron. Guys are here. kissing each other on the cheek. Yeah. But if you said you're gay, they would beat the fuck out of you. Oh, you'd go missing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you'd go missing. How dare you? Now they don't care. I mean, now if I'm like with my, you know, with all my friends and stuff in Italy, no one gives a shit now. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I mean, Sicily, there's still, depends on who you talk to, but like in Rome, I'm. It's like a modern city, yeah, you know? yeah. But yeah, the first time I went to Europe, I was fifteen. I loved it. I was like, wow. And I've been going back every year since. Yeah, that's all. Oh, every year, good for you. I'm interested to see to think about that. I want to see the gap between fifteen year old closet, or maybe I'm just Italian, Matteo, <laughs> and eighteen year old. Now I'm gay, going going to Italy, Matteo. What was the? What were you like Not at fifteen? Changed. No, yeah. Because um. <laughs> you because you grew up in Chicago. Yeah. And Arlington Heights for the two. Arlington specific. Heights, it's a suburb. Okay, so you, I respect. Thank you for saying that because, as somebody who grew up in the within the city limits of Baltimore, anytime somebody claims it, like our friend of the show, Sahib Singh, that motherfucker grew up in the suburbs. <laughs> okay, he didn't grow up in Baltimore. Well, to be fair, I lived in uh, the suburbs until I was about sixteen, and then seventeen, and then after high school, I moved to the city. Yeah, yeah. I lived in the city proper because all my friends were in the city. Yeah, yeah. Until I was like twenty to be arts five. Yeah, in the big city. Yeah. yeah, it was. You had to escape. To of be, course, of course. I needed uh, uh, to be anonymous. Of right? course, of That's course. The lure of a big city, so yeah. people don't be like, "He's gay." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, the three gay guys in the suburb. Oh, you know, one's in, one of them is 80. And they're like, why don't you date Walter? It's like, Walter's 85 years old. Oh, <laughs> He's God. the only other gay guy. 
But you were because I because it also you also have like a bunch of gay people in your family, right? Don't you have like everyone's gay in my isn't family? That, it was just so a, interesting. A sea of faggots. <laughs> like you have my, your cousin, right? My cousin, my brother. Your cousin, and, your brother. Yes, and we think it's from our Mexican side because it's genetic. <laughs> <laughs> we, so my grand, so my backstory of my yes. mom's history. My mother is actually Italian and Mexican. Okay. So my blood grandfather is Mexican gotcha. and uh, and not like Spanish Mexican like indigenous yes, yes, Mexican yes. and uh, they had five kids and my mother was one of them but you know it was the 50s so he had a mistress and he had <laughs> five kids with another woman and then he named all of them the same name so he no, didn't forget them what the fuck yes so two Joaquins two Lisas two <laughs> they all had the same name same names same names. Oh my so God. then my, my nonna found out and divorced him and then remarried a Sicilian. Oh. So my mother was probably in high school by that point. Because my the pictures of my my mother's family growing up was either Dagos or Mexican. Yeah, and the yeah, Mexicans yeah. are like, I mean, like, as Mexican as you can yeah, get. Yeah, yeah. And then my grandma, you know, I love my grandma, but in a very unhealthy way, she was like, we're never speaking to that family again. They they yeah. fucked me. Yeah. And so my mom, all her cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, all these Mexicans just bye bye. Wow. It's super unhealthy. Wow. You know. And my mother I get it though. Well, I, it's, I it's extreme, my, but I see where she's Italians coming from. Extreme. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I see you got you got that cheated on to a, a mistress with a duplicate fam like not just a couple kids, copied every single one and named them the same <laughs> names yep. for ease of remembering. <laughs> Before she before she found out, she's like, "Oh, Joaquin is such a beautiful name. Yeah, how did yeah. he come out? How did he come up with that? What a perfect name for our son!" Yeah, he was treating his family like it was a filing system. He was like, "We have to get we have to, we have to buy the same cameras here and on the road, eldest, so we know how to use them." That's how he's treating his kids, like he was running a business. But what's funny is my non. I don't know how she did this. She somehow my uncle. Well, my my his name was Joaquin. My uncle Jack. She got his name changed on the birth certificate, which Incredible. I'm like, what Sicilian shit is that? Yeah, How did you manage awesome. that? <laughs> so then she married a Sicilian who's who raised me and my mother. We, we were very communal raising in yeah, my family. Yeah, yeah. It's like all my cousins and everything. But and so my grandpa is my Sicilian grandfather, and I was raised culturally Sicilian. And um, I mean, I am Italian, but like he was my real grandpa. But I did meet my my blood grandfather. Uh, my mother and him reconciled. The cheater. The cheater. Yes, yes, yes. Before he died. And he was also Italian, but not Sicilian. No, he was the Mexican. Oh, he was Mexican. Sorry. sorry. Um, gotcha, so gotcha. my mother... Re Grandma's Italian. Yes. Gotcha, gotcha. Grandma's gotcha, gotcha. Napolitano, for those Napolitan. and Which is Greek-based. Uh, mm, uh, how do you it. say new city in Greek? Neapoli. Was, okay, uh, Napoli is yeah, how you Napoli, say it. Yeah, Napoli. Napoli. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. So, um... Another thing they took from us. <laughs> Naples? I don't think anyone's... <laughs> no one's crying over Naples. <laughs> uh, although, to be fair, Naples created opera in pizza ah, but that's uh, big those are two big ones but she did meet my dad her dad again and then i met him and then he was trying to and, and look she asked him every question and he answered every question well wow. you know she was like my mom said you because my my grandmother was trying to stop him from seeing her kids she said, i don't want him to see how well i raised you guys yeah, yeah, you know yeah. don't don't let him back into your life and you know he wanted me to get an abortion with you wow. and my mom really said, putting the guilt in oh, heavy italian yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and my yeah. mom said to him did you want to get it and he said yes i did wow so you know it, it to his credit yeah you know even it was like i ran out of names <laughs> i was, gonna, it was like i got i was like uh, yeah, yeah. i couldn't think of any more <laughs> so unless it was joaquina yeah. i don't know what to name you <laughs> sherry so but yeah, my mother's birth name is a French Mexican name, Cherie Maldonado. Cherie Maldonado. And now it's, she, she, you know, I yeah. think, yeah, she was like, I'm just marrying a white guy. So yeah, my yeah, dad, yeah. Lane, Irish, Lane. <laughs> his family has zero problems. They're like, yeah. well, we go driving every Sunday. And <laughs> yeah. it was very fun. My mom was like, yeah, we were living with my Italian grandparents because furniture was getting confiscated. And my yeah. wife got five brothers and sisters with the same name. And you know, yeah. she met all her brothers and sisters at the funeral. The and Mexicans. my grandpa's, yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, they're half too. They're half, half, and what? I don't know, know what the other half is. Something white, but they were like, yeah. "Hello, we're your, yeah, we're you, <laughs> yeah, yeah." I'm Bizarro, you. <laughs> but I did 23 Me, and my first cousin is just some some Mexican guy, Antonio Maldonado, who wow. also did 23 and Me, oh, and it and it doesn't show for some reason. I don't know what because my family came from Italy like what 80 years ago, so it's like it doesn't. No one in Italy's done 23 Me, right. but I have like a bunch of second and third cousins mm -hmm. all over Mexico. Mm -hmm. 
mm, that are related to me. Get out of I'm here. I'm like, that's kind of crazy. Do they tell you if they're gay? They have a little pride flag next to them to show you that I they're can gay. tell by the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so back so to you were thing. saying he runs on the Mexican side. So because of the split in my yes. family, right? The ki- the grandkids born from the Sicilian side and the grandkids born from the Mexican side because I have thirty four first cousins. Jesus. Um, the Mexican side, three out of the five. Gay. <laughs> the rest of them straight. Yeah. So my aunt Cindy was like, I think it's the Mexican <laughs> side. And she thinks that my grandpa's brother was gay. She was like, Well, he owned a hair salon in the 50s and liked theater. She's like, And he was beaten up in high school. I mean, come on now. And I, I was like, She's you're got not a wrong. point. She's got a point. I but, like that she's trying to track it like it's, you know, blue eyes. Kind of. The gay gene. <laughs> I kind of believe it in a way. Like, gene. But it's funny how genetics work because my mother got, my grandmother's very light. And so my mom got like green eyes, almost blonde, golden blonde hair, mm-hmm. light skin. And my aunt Cindy, same blood, same parents. Yeah. Totally dark, totally Mexican. No, that's, I mean, you see that there's the, there's, there's these like, you know, it was a meme going around, but it was like fraternal twins that were, you know, the mom was black and the dad was white, I think. And one of them looks like Santino. She's like a redhead. She looks Irish. And the other girl's like a, a black girl. And they were fraternal <laughs> twins, like born at the same time. Like minutes apart. Can you imagine the doctors trying to not make a face. Yeah, they're like, "What is going? <laughs> did she half fuck a black guy? <laughs> how, did, <laughs> how did she manage? Yeah, this? yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it is because twenty. That's how twenty three and me works. Also, it's like if you and your sibling do it, they show you what the siblings' genes. Like they show you the ones that are like activated in the sibling. Mm. So it's like you know if like your brother, like if your you know aunt and mom did it. Your aunt's genes would be more Mexican. Mexican, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's very interesting. So your siblings could do it and not get so similar, maybe I'm get more, different results. Well, I don't. I look so Italian, even though I'm yeah. Mexican and Irish also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know how, but I was raised culturally Italian, so that's why, like, I speak Italian. Like, I you got a real Robert De Niro thing going. He's like half German or whatever, right? And everyone's like, he's the most Italian guy. He's from the Godfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. I feel bad because I do this like cooking. Show on my food, on um, yeah. my Insta or TikTok, um, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube. You got it. And uh, keep naming websites. You'll and get people there. People are like, "How come you don't talk about your Mexican side?" I'm like, "Well, I, I wasn't. Ra- I, I do, but I'm like, my I don't, Mex- I- yeah, my Mexican side is about cheating. <laughs> it's a philander. <laughs> it's a philanderous. <laughs> my grand, my the patriarch of the Mexican side was a philanderer. But just him. The rest of the family seems great. Seems like nice. it's strange to see these books of all my relatives in mexico yeah. and it's just they look so nice and friendly i'm like God, it would have been it would have been nice to be raised with that as a part of my sure, life absolutely. so i'm trying as i get older to like reconnect to that yeah that's a nice little that's another thing do you I, speak spanish at all i do speak spanish yeah with an italian accent when did you start learning all these accents or i'm sorry not accents languages because um, you you speak what italian Spanish, French, what else? Some German. A little German, just a little bit. I mean, pretty good. Good for you. Nice. When did you start this? Were you like a, a multilingual guy in high school? Did you take a lot of stuff in high school? No, I almost just... failed out of high school. Really? I hated it. I was so Lur- tortured and closeted. I just wanted out. I was made. I was relentlessly made yeah, fun yeah, of. Yeah. I, Somehow won Homecoming King. Homecoming King. Because it was all football players and choir. Interesting. So it was like there was six football players and then me. But the choir didn't have to divide their votes oh, between the football what? players. So there were two queens that yeah, year. But, yeah. but it was kind of nice because it was like me and my friend Tantiana, who I went to middle school with. It was like, oh, work. It was like it was all white girls, then Tantiana, and all straight guys, and then me. Yeah, and we yeah, won. Yeah. And still to this day, we'll message like, you know, hey, That's homecoming awesome. queen. But, um, yeah, I, I started learning Italian when I was going to Italy. And you just, no one speaks English, so you're yeah. just suddenly Picked it up. speaking Italian. Yeah. And 15 is a good age to start learning languages anyways, because your brain's still absorbing. Yeah. And then I learned Spanish, well, I learned French because I, th- I, I guess I am a nerd. I loved this movie, The Young Girls of Rockford with Catherine Deneuve. It's a <laughs> yeah. French New Age jazz film. <laughs> And I love the musical. That I wanted is to learn so French. gay. That's the that's gayer it's the than, gayest movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the gayest movie. This is the gayest. Like the part about you sucking the Brazilian guy off. Not as gay as learning oh. a language because of because you saw a woman <laughs> elegantly smoking a cigarette in a movie. <laughs> you saw a woman with great bone structure oh. <laughs> in black and white, and you were like, "I have to know the language she speaks." <laughs> oh, you see too clearly. <laughs> I'm so transparent. <laughs> 
for it. So, yes, that's no, why it's I great. good that's why for I you. Like, well, you also you also have clearly an affinity for language because no one can pick shit up. Like like Elders knows Albanian, I know Greek, but we were raised in it. You know what right, I mean? Right. And like I couldn't, I I barely, I took French one five times. You know what I mean? Like I I still don't know how to count to like eleven. I, or I remember learning French with my friend Anaïs, who's French, and I just said, "Oh, just start speaking French to me," because grammatically, French and Italian really are the same. Yeah. You can speak Italian with a French accent, you're pretty good. Gotcha. So there was, I already had those Romance languages. Like the bridge was already built. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, and Spanish was with uh, Felicia Evans' ex-wife. Oh yeah. Who's one of my good friends, and she's from Mexico. Yeah. And so for two and a half years, I was like, yeah, we're only speaking Spanish. Wow. We only watch Spanish TV. We Hilarious. only spoke Spanish. Evan doesn't speak Spanish. Not a word. <laughs> Fucking dumbass. And so like in two Fucking months. Fucking white dumbass. <laughs> in two months, I learned Spanish. Wow. So, and my cousin Brian speaks Italian and he also can understand Spanish. So then Felicia's sister, Anna, would come over. So then all of us are just speaking Spanish. Awesome. And Evan's like, what is this infestation? Yeah, 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 going on? Yeah, but I learned yeah, yeah. so much about my Mexican culture through Felicia. Yeah. And her family was so wonderful. And, and yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I love it. But you just picked it up. That's very fascinating. So that's funny because in high school, you're saying you were just... You weren't really learning because you were just spending all your energy pretending to be straight. Is that what which was going always on? failed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know course. what I mean. No matter how I tried walking or looking, did at you ever have like a, the fake girlfriend or whatever? Of course. Oh yeah, oh, wow. I dated Francesca at Michaels. <laughs> we worked at Michaels together. <laughs> That's so awesome. We're still friends. Just She's got imagine, a husband and a pit bull. That's great. Imagine the like fat like sixty year old woman who was like you know at the fabric section be like, oh yeah, you two are dating, huh? <laughs> like it just knew exactly she what just was going get on. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I just, broke up with her in the yarn section because she was cheating on me with her ex boyfriend. <laughs> Did you guys ever hook up? We made out. You made out. That's but as far as I've gone yeah, with the girls. Oh, wow. Out. Never seen a pussy up close, huh? No. I wow. mean, in art school. In <laughs> <laughs> that, that's awesome that was, and i'm not one of i'm not one of these gay people i don't look at vaginas and think ew gross of course. I, they're women are very beautiful and very yeah. sexy but i'm sexually attracted to yeah to men yeah um but i would have no problem i mean i would be interested it would be interesting to watch me to watch me to for me to have sex with to try know. and fuck a woman I don't know how I would feel so bad for them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it would be so not. I can barely top. Like yeah. I don't know how to be a top. I get so, so much top anxiety. Of course, it's easy to be a bottom for in a lot of ways. I mean, yeah. everyone at home is really confused right now. But like, they get it. They can like, put it together. To be a top, it requires like a real kind of like energy. Yeah. And I was like, I I would have to pretend I'm like the frosty, the flakes guy. Like they're great. Like I'm yeah, just like yeah, yeah. fucking you, or I'm. It would be an I'm. acting challenge. It would be, an, and I don't know. How, I just I you I don't see have it as an energy. Energy, interesting. It is, and I've and there's there's guys in the past that I've dated where like I feel so comfortable with them, and then that changes everything. Mm -hmm. I'm very sensitive to other people's energies, so like sure. for someone, to, you can like, be more sexually adventurous when you have a real bond with someone. I think. Yeah, but that's I'm gay, so that's almost impossible to, yeah. <laughs> to have. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know how I would. So you got to work your way up to topping men. I and used then, to be a good top, and then I, I think my, my last boyfriend was only a top, so I was like, I'll I'll, I'll bottom. Yeah. But then it sort of broke my confidence in oh, topping. And we got to get your ass fucking confidence. I know back I don't up. know how to do it. I'm sure I have a plethora of options. Yeah, but I that's just don't not the humiliate issue. Humiliate them in myself. Head. Nah, you got to get over that. You need a couple slam pieces. You need a slam couple pieces. guys you don't care about to really oh, get. <laughs> You need to get back in the zone with a couple guys that, and they know what's up too. I bet you people would be happy to be like your training ass. <laughs> you know what that I mean? That would be kind of great. <laughs> yeah. I know. I had a friend who was like, he had was in the same situation. I was like, yeah. we should just practice on each other. He's like, that'd be fun. We That's, never got to it. He got yeah. a boyfriend. But um, just the fact that being gay, that option is just there. So nice. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I would yeah. like to top more. How did we get into me topping? This is what this show is about. I went about. from me being Mexican to topping. <laughs> this is what this show is about. We're really exploring it. My grandpa um, was really good at topping. He really was. <laughs> but yeah, t is he still alive? Get him on the phone. No, yeah, uh, How'd you uh, fuck so God? many people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hola, Joaquin. <laughs> is Joaquin Sr. there? He didn't know I was gay, obviously. He would try and connect with me and send me birthday cards, but it was like with like Big League Chew. I'm like, yeah. it should have been like a Barbie dress. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, nice yeah, for yeah. the nice, you know, he called himself Jack for short, so Jack nice. Maldonado. 
Jacket. Anyone named last name Maldonado? That's a powerful last name. Maldonado. Maldonado sounds it's good. It's super Mexican. Very common in Mexico and Puerto Rico. It's us. better than Lane. No disrespect. No, my, my da- look, I love my dad's family, but like it, they're just so disconnected to mm-hmm. like, they're just, they're very American. Yeah. And my mother's family is so not like, yeah. I mean, they are obviously, but it's like it, you can see that juxtaposition when you, like you grew up only Greek. Only Greek. So imagine you don't, you don't like, I can tell by grandparents my dad's grandparents, lovely people. Yeah. But I think before they died, they died when I was in my 20s. I think I saw them maybe five times growing up. Yeah, that is a very strange thing with, like, um, like American, I guess, you know, American white people. I don't know how to put right. it. But, like, non, non-immigrant non whites. Right. Right? Indi- indigenous whites. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were talking earlier before the podcast where it was, like, we were talking about, like, dating people. And it was, like, I have had an easier time dating immigrants who are not white than a white person who's like you know whose family's been here forever right i have so much more in common than any immigrant with in common with any immigrant than i do like somebody who just has because there is like a coldness you know what i mean like especially when you're from a it's like i noticed my dad's family it's like well and, and his parents who were loving i mean but they said we had kids they grew up now you go right where the italians never disconnect right so my, my parents are still mad i moved out of the house <laughs> <laughs> like they're like they're like until you get a wife you live here right that is still the like in their heart like that's the way it is yeah yeah, yeah, yeah my yeah. i saw my mom which is parents. also crazy by the way but there needs to be a little middle they, ground they, they, they just <laughs> you know? to be, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's embarrassing when you just like a 45 even, year old man even my li- yeah i mean go to greek town when, <laughs> when you come to baltimore when you come to baltimore we'll show you you can tell because they have like hundred thousand dollar cars parked outside of the town home they split with their mother still <laughs> and then like they get their they, she does their laundry are and there everything. that many greeks in baltimore yeah, there's, I mean, it's the neighborhood is definitely like a lot of people have moved out, a lot of people moved to the suburbs, but honestly, it's still a, a really still good, pretty Greek. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I mean, one of my brothers moved out, one is still there. My, you know, my my parents still live there. I want to run um, a joke by you. I did an off the cuff. I was at the cellar the other night, and there was this girl who's Greek and Italian, so I started going in on her, mm-hmm. and I was telling all these jokes about Greek people, and it's like, oh, this is actually really funny. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But it's so, I don't know if Greeks would. Like Please. in those moments, you know what I mean? Like it works of in course, the room. Of course. But if you put it online, obviously it does like different context to it. But I might edit it and send it to you to be like, do you, how do you feel Greek Anytime. people would interpret? I'm not saying anything racist. I'm just yeah, saying yeah, like, yeah, yeah. how would they interpret? Because I'm talking about my friend Sophia's mom reading our coffee cups and she'd read mine and she'd be like, because for Greeks, they do something called tesography, which is like tea leaf reading yeah, yeah, where they, yeah. they have like. Did Albanians read coffee, Eldest? Yeah, and we called it Turkish coffee. Shut the fuck <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Qu- well, Tur- cut your own mic Turkish for the coffee. remainder of the episode. It's Greek coffee, you motherfucker. No, Turkish, Turkish <laughs> he coffee. He couldn't wait. Look at his fucking face. Look how happy he was to say that. Sacrilegious <laughs> bullshit. It is Greek coffee. Those uh, those treacherous Ottomans took a lot from us. <laughs> I really struck a nerve. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to go there. <laughs> it wasn't you, it was Eldis. He knew. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> the, the, Turkish, the Turkish burn their coffee a couple times. The Greeks do it just once. I yeah. think that's the difference in the coffee. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. We Yeah, we do it just once. But it her mother would read our fortune, and she'd read mine, and it is fun and interesting, and she'd say, you know, you have, you have, a, her name is Daphne, you have a, a, you over here, you make money, this, look at yeah. this road, look at this road, where are you going, you know, <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah, I yeah, see yeah. a snake, who is in you, who is using you, you know, <laughs> yeah, so totally. she, and then she'd read Sophia's, this says that you're a bitch, like she's just <laughs> yelling yeah, at her daughter, yeah, 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 yeah. but, absolutely, no, we definitely do that, my mom and my grandma uh, did that for years, I would, I would love to have your mother read my fortune, that would be great, cup. she still does it, yeah, absolutely, we're going to Baltimore, baby, we're going to do it. Um, Good morning, Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. I love John Waters. I've read most He's of around. his books. He's yeah. around. He would, when we would go, the bars we would go to in Baltimore, he would hang out at. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, was, wrote, he wrote a great book called Role Models, which I think all comics should read. It's oh. just very fascinating to see his interpretation of I'll read that. I'm looking for something people he was obsessed with and stuff like that and redemption and all that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, he's the I mean, shout out to John Waters, obviously. Baltimore legend. I love uh, Divine in like, I think it was uh, Flamingo. Um, what's the movie called? Pink, yeah, Flamingos, Pink Flamingos. Where they were interviewing Divine. She's a, a drag queen from the 80s. And they're like, what's your political stance? Kill everyone. <laughs> murder <laughs> everything. Yeah. Eat shit. Die. Yeah. Like, it's so It's really, did perfection. you know that Divine, she, 
uh, was about to, she was cast on um, Married with Children yeah. right before she died. And I she know. was like about to break out into like mainstream, because incredible, so funny. In a way, she's she's immortalized in such a beautiful way. For sure, a know, legend. But, but she shouldn't have died so young. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I love Divine. And she inspired Ursula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, the fucking drag queens are great. They really, How they really are. How progressive in the 80s to have Divine. I know. They really are hilarious. Well, to base a character right. and not give her any credit. <laughs> right. Right. It's, not, it's, it's actually traditionally what happens to marginalized people. That's correct. <laughs> That's a great idea. Let's give another lady that. Let's give a straight woman that role. And just to take. Enough. Although even whoever played Ursula was great. All the auditions I get are, are still, as far as we've gotten, if you're gay and you're because I don't know how to be straight. I don't yeah, know how yeah, to. Yeah. I have gay voice and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, of yeah. all the languages I speak, I can't speak straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, but all the the roles are still all the same. You get them, and it's the best friend. Yeah. who's got sassy quips. Of course, who has zero merit or yeah, zero. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like just in there to be sassy. Just in there to be sassy. And that, I mean, the part of it is I am. I am the friend <laughs> yeah. who's sassy. And, you know what I mean? Like that's who I yeah, am. Yeah. But it well, sucks. listen. Bros flopped, so it's going to be another 10 years, Mateo, okay? <laughs> it's going to be another 45. I think that, yeah. What a while. I never saw it. Fire yeah. Island was great. If you've Fire, not Island, seen Fire was Island, really you good. should see Fire, Fire Island. Fire Island was really Joel, good. Joel, Kambooster, Matt Rogers, and Bowen yep. Yang are just, they're just, yep. you know, the, the best. Yeah. But, um... And, um, uh, fuck. Can't believe I'm... Margaret Cho Margaret is Cho. incredible in it. I, ju I just... I, mean, I kind of met her on and off, but I just did like a full two hour podcast with her the That's other day. Awesome. And uh, she rules. Oh, she's yeah. Un, un, she's undersung. I fully remember like one of my favorite, one of my first memories in comedy. Cause I didn't have, you know, we didn't have cable. We didn't have anything. She had the sitcom. Yeah. All American I, girl. All American girl. And I remember seeing it and then seeing her Dr. Katz actually, I think at your house. Cause Dr. Katz, you had cable, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Oh, and so, and and that's and then kind of going backwards and finding her shit out because I didn't I wasn't exposed to too much. I'm the one that I want that stand up special is probably one of the best stand up specials yeah. of all time. Yeah, she's great, revolutionary. Yeah. I mean, you know, and yeah, she's, she looks cool as shit too. She got tattoos. Oh now. yeah, she's yeah, yeah. great, and she just um, knows herself so well. Yeah. I love Margaret, which, which is so important in comedy. That's the truly the biggest thing. I mean, everyone loves. Everyone loves, uh, you have to be technically gifted, right? You have to know how to write a joke or be a great performer or ho like hopefully some. some some combination of <laughs> yeah. those right, things. But really, what really is important in stand-up comedy, the more I get into it and the older I get into it, is like having an authentic perspective that only you can pull off. Sure. Because people can steal your jokes. They can even steal your mannerisms. But they really can't tell, they can't steal that kind of authenticity. Yeah. And, and I think that's like, that's what I mean, or maybe that's just what I have started really valuing more than anything. But like, and that's what I think is, you know, so great about lots of well, things. She's super it's, funny, it's but she's maturing. so completely understands herself, and everything yeah. is from her perspective. And that's really fucking hard. Is fully not relying on the tropes, not relying on like the fat jokes, the gay jokes, the whatever. And it's like, or just doing it just enough that's you know true to your. Um, you know, existence or whatever. But I anyway. remember just talking about, because sometimes when you travel with other comics, you start to pick up certain mannerisms. So years ago, me and Lisa Traeger, who's one of my favorite comedians, yeah, and I laud is literally, I think she's one of the most naturally gifted comics. Very funny. You got to get her on here. And, and she's phenomenal in a way. If you've not seen her, you should look her up. She's phenomenal way because it, the, an audience watching her will see her and not understand what she's doing, whether it's calculated or whether it's just off the cuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she can, her punchline could be like a sigh. Yeah, yeah, and I've yeah. seen that like a shrug and a sigh, murder. She definitely has a, an, an incredible physicality. But we, I remember we were on the road with each other for when we first started in comedy, and we were like doing these double headliners at these like D I clubs remember that. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I mean, just bombing for hours yeah. on end. And it was so funny because we started to pick up each other's mannerisms. <laughs> yeah. And one day she was like, "I think I'm doing you," and I, like, I think I'm doing. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The funniest thing ever. We were sitting at lunch one time. And we're outside in Cleveland, outside of Hilarities. We ordered lunch, and this homeless guy comes up with a flower and goes up to Lisa and goes, there's two parts to this. He goes, can I offer you a rose for the pretty princess? And she goes, no. And he walked away, and right when he gets out of her line of vision, she goes, princess of what? <laughs> That's a great question. That's what she she should she should have directed him to you. <laughs> he would have he would have he would have had more more luck. Um, I love Lisa. The, the, all that great. to say is yeah, so funny. 
Why don't we add, well, look? We've got we've very gotten to know you, Matteo. People already knew you, but let's take some of this knowledge. Let's solve some of these problems. Okay. Let's pull up pull some problems up for us. We we got law. We we were, the the convo was so good. We were riffing so well, but we got to solve these motherfuckers' issues here. <laughs> Here's with the first question, Elvis. And you know, yeah, you got to fucking play a sound or something. Hey, stop. Love the show. Um, have a you bit know of. This happens every time you fucking dunce. <laughs> Hey, Stav, love the show. Um, have a bit of a conundrum. So, my best friend since, like, middle school just drunkenly confessed to me that he fucked my girlfriend at the time in high school, which oh. was 10 years ago. Oh, no. And I don't know. Like, I haven't talked to that girl in years. So oh. I don't, there's no, like, emotional attachment to her, but it's oh. kind of shitty that he fucked my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, like... Do I chop it up to him being a shitty friend, or like, do I say, oh, he's just like trying to get his dick wet like ten years ago? So <laughs> no, you know, not that a long time ago. Let me forget. But I don't know. What do I do? Do I cut this motherfucker off, or do I just get over it? Thanks, that. Oh my god, that's okay. a tough one. Well, I think it's in high school and it's ten years ago. Those and are he's yes. been your friends since. I think you chalk it up to. This is something shitty you did in high school and you should have said something to me, but we didn't have the emotional capacity to, one, deal with that kind of yeah. conversation at that time. Now he's obviously told you. I would say work through it. Yeah, so 10 years since high school. So let's say they're 26 now. Yeah. Right? So that means 16, 26. So 16 years old. Let's say 16 or 18, 26, 28. Like, I'm trying to think. If Elders did this to me, <laughs> I would be like, what? You fucking piece I would of laugh. shit? Yeah, I guess in, re like, so out of context... I'm like, that is pretty shitty. And don't get me wrong, it is shitty. Well, you would laugh because it'd be like, yeah, your friend fucked your friend at uh, Michael's. <laughs> yeah, Tatiana. she needed it. Yeah, Tatiana. Yeah. <laughs> Let Francesca yeah. get it. Yeah, Francesca. I was not yeah. delivering. You were fumbling on her tits. <laughs> I didn't get that far. <laughs> um, it is shitty, but yeah, you, cutting him off, if he's been a stellar friend in every other sense, you don't want to do that, right? You don't want right. to If he's been a great friend, and also if this is... If this is the one thing he did, but... Well, give him the chance to apologize and make amends. I mean, has he been good to you for the past 10 years? Yeah. You know, he obviously right. felt bad about it. Um, he didn't have five other kids with another woman named all the same <laughs> right, names. Right, and my right, mother right. forgave my her dad. <laughs> right, so, right, right. you know, it's not that bad. But I love that this is the most emotional this straight man's ever been. A hundred percent. No, <laughs> this is devastating for him. Are devastating. you kidding me? What he wants to say is like, I feel emotionally violated that my friend who was supposed to have my set. But instead he's like, oh, I'm in a conundrum. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fuck my girlfriend. Now, did he... So, he fucked her while they were dating? Like, she cheated? He cut She him? cheated on him. With his best friend in high school, and then they broke up, and then they never talked about it until now. He said yeah. he drunkenly confessed to him. I would say you have to put this in the greater context of your friendship. Um, is he the because look, people also have these weird frenemy relationships, right? Where it's like my friend Nick Smith, I hate him. <laughs> where it's like, especially in high school, you have those weird relationships where it's like, yeah. Were you always like? Did you always kind of root against me? Were you not? Did you not have my back? Yeah. If there was this kind of weird thing where you're not, you know, now does this open up a whole other thing of like, wow, he fucked, you know, he fucked a bunch of. Did he do other shit behind my back? Like, if it ruins the trust, that's one thing. Like, again, I'm putting this in a real world example of like, I have my best friend right in front of me here, and if he fucked the girl that I wanted to fuck, and I, now none of us were getting pussy. That's the that's the that's what's really hard here is we didn't start fucking until our twenties, so it's like let's I guess let's move to our twenties then, but I don't care about any of those girls. Like truly, it would just be more of a thing of like, can I trust you? You know what I mean? I don't know. It, it would be hard, even even if like you don't care about the girl and you know like it's in the past. It would be. It would be it would weird. Make you pause. It would it would shift everything you fundamentally know about this person. Like that's well, the thing about. I mean, let's. That's a bit. That's a tad no, too far. No, it's not don't you though. Think? Dude, like your in best high friend. School? High school. I guess you're. But high school. The things we were doing in high school that you just don't. There's no foresight. There's no thought to it. There, your brain is literally growing. Your body is full high school, of hormones. Right. I guess I think, I I guess think I high thinking, school would be easier to write off. I than guess I was like thinking twenties for a second because early twenties because I moved early like, twenty one and sixteen are two different universes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. They you're are right. two different universes. Sixteen. I mean, you just started driving. 
That's a child. Yeah, it's a child. That is a child. And probably, and what if his friend had never gotten any pussy before, and the uh, and the, and the ex girlfriend was like a dumb bitch who was trying to fuck. You know what I mean? Like context also matters here. Like, was he going behind your back trying to fuck? I mean, a little of it matters, but. Ultimately, I think if this is a really good friend and you can chalk this up to he made a mistake when he was a kid, um, you can kind of put him on probation almost, mm-hmm. you know, and like prove that you're still the same guy, prove that I can still trust you, um, you know. But if it, but also if it does change it for him, you can't control that either, right? Like if this guy is like, can I even trust this guy? Does this, you know... Did he lie? He lied to me then. What's going to stop? Did he lie to me in college? Did he lie to me there? Does it, if it also affects you that way, that's fair too. You right. also have to see how you feel about this because everybody is different too. But if the friendship means something to you, try and have redemption and try and have a conversation about it. You at you least know? owe it that, I think, yeah. to yourself even. You don't want to lose a friend over like no. a girl from high school that you don't care about either. Hey, stop. Love the show. <laughs> uh, I have a bit of a conundrum. <laughs> Also since middle school. So yeah, you have to look at it in full context. You have to think about what kind of friend this guy is to you. And you really have to think about what's what's worth it for you. Um, but I think high school, high school you should be okay. But you know what's interesting, and we'll move on, but if he had known about this in college, like now we can say that, right? Right. As 30 college year olds. too close. But if he had found out about it in college, it would have been over. It would have ruined the relationship. Yeah. So it is a little bit of this so the guy. the friend obviously wants his friendship and felt he fucked up. That's why he didn't tell him for so yeah. long. And then it couldn't hold on to the guilt anymore and admitted it to him. And yeah. I think that if he had already admitted that, he would have admitted whatever else he had done wrong. It's true. So, yeah, doesn't change it, but it's it's truly up to you and you really have to think about I think you give him a shot on almost a probationary thing and think, is he still my friend? Is Has anything really changed? And if you feel like it has and and the, it fundamentally shifts for you, that's totally uh, acceptable for you. But I think you owe it to yourself to give it a shot and really talk about this and make sure he hasn't fucked you over in any other ways. Or just listen to my mom's story and you'll feel better. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Hit us with another one, Eld. Hey, Stav. Just want to... Got a little story. Uh, <laughs> I hooked up with this total goth babe Ooh. in fucking college. Goth. And, you know, broke, we broke it off. And, like, back then, this was, like, six years ago. This is the first time he's ever talked. Or something. <laughs> yeah, not, and not a lot of good communicators. I sent her a Facebook message long saying, like, that's hey, really let's, we should meet up again, you know, as long just like total, totally <laughs> desperate at the time. <laughs> and I know it came off that way. And I deleted Facebook <laughs> because of it. Because I was like, oh, uh, I think about it. And so I was like, how do you think I could get back at it? <laughs> Love it. So we lost half of what he said, a little bit of what he said. I don't think he knows his problem. But, it, I mean, this is hysterical. <laughs> I don't He's like, how can I fuck? He was like, I fucked this girl six years ago. I faced, I tried to contact her in a way that was so embarrassing, it led me to delete an entire social media account. <laughs> hey, Stav, how do I bounce back from that? Bad news, pal, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucked. <laughs> yeah, I that's... <laughs> Yeah. That and no. You the answer is no. The Sometimes no. there's no solution. I know, and it's tough. I I know. Listen, you clearly don't get a lot of good pussy. You got some. You got some. Uh, some black lipstick marks on your or dick six hot years topic ago. And hang out and I don't know. Find that's someone those else. Are, those are. He's a, he's now he's six years out of college. Oh, okay. No, Twenty seven. Don't, don't go to hot topic. <laughs> Children are going there. Spencer. <laughs> yeah. I kind I kind of disagree here. Go I think he has a path. <laughs> That says a lot about you. Here comes Elvis. He has a path to at least double down. But to get his Facebook back. Sorry, you might have noticed that my Facebook was deleted the other week, but now it's (laughs) back. Anyways, coffee. (laughs) Bringing the Facebook back is no big deal because she probably like didn't even notice he like deleted it or didn't give a fuck. She noticed, but was it was the message read? 
That's a good question. Even if it was red, okay. who knows? Maybe she just like fucked some like see, really man. hot dude or was like on some good path. I'd say like give it like six to nine months. Six you to can nine bring months. you can bring your Facebook back before <laughs> then. But give it six to nine months. Let the impact of that thirsty ass <laughs> message wear off, and then double down a little more simply. Don't go straight to do you want to hang out? Just be like, "Sup? How's it going?" or something, and. Who knows? Who knows where her headspace was <laughs> when she saw that? Who knows when it's going to be in a little just under a year? This is not a man who has six months, Aldis. You know how criminally horny this it's guy been, was when he... Ta- when also, been, his phone's barely working. I don't yeah. even think... It's been six years. He can wait nine months. <laughs> this is a man who is so horny. He found himself so down bad that he was like, who's the last hot girl that fucked me? He had to go back six years, and he hit her with a Facebook message that was so embarrassing, he deleted his account. You think this is a man that can that can do long-term strategic planning? It's th- out of the question. I think he could. I think he just needs to, like, <laughs> let it simmer a little, let the impact wear off, work on himself a little, maybe date some other girls. But I think he, he can at I least just double that, down. the latter. Just... <laughs> Work no, on no. yourself and date some other girl. Yeah, Not that's, the fantasy that's of some it, girl dude. six years ago. You, you have nothing to lose with a double down. <laughs> no, nope. just saying what's up. He lost everything. He has nothing to lose. He lost his Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he lost the ability to see which one of his fucking uncles is QAnon now, Eldis. <laughs> now, look, okay. I see sort of what you're talking about, right? In theory, he has nothing to lose with a double down. But that's a have eight irons in the fire strategy. <laughs> this man has no irons. He's not even close. He's where he he's he's at a mountain with a pickaxe trying to mine iron ore right now. He's not so far away from being close to fucking anyone. But you're, the second part is right. Just work on yourself. Trying try and date somebody else. It's a you. Th- this was a high point for him, dude. He's trying to get glory. It's it's like the guy. It's like it's Uncle Rico talking about high school, throwing a mount, a football over the mountains. We've all been there. We all remember the best, the hottest person we've ever fucked, and we think about what Mine if was I could. Tuesday. <laughs> 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 Give it up to me, Mateo. I have certainly found myself, you know, um, longing. Yeah, lonely longing. Where it's like it's not even like a can I fuck someone. It's like oh, I miss. I miss like a you know someone whatever and it's like it, it and instead of doing the work to like build up a new relationship go on some first dates find a person you like it's so easy to be like why don't i just hit up you know four girls i've loved <laughs> maybe one of them's life is bad enough to dm me back yeah. but that's a loser's mentality eldest then i'm a loser that's a loser's <laughs> mentality and that's what we have to look buddy what the you can't this is over Think of it as over. Try and fuck some other people. Try and build some new relationships. And if in six to nine months you have a little more self-esteem and you want to give the Sula method a chance <laughs> and hit her with a what can I lose to reply. And I see what you're saying, Aldis. There's nothing lost in replying to an Instagram story and being like, damn, that's wild. And seeing where it goes, you don't lose anything except your dignity. This man doesn't have much of that, right? That's clear. <laughs> I think, though, buddy, you're fucked. You you really fell flat on your face. You you basically, if he had given one respectable message, and it's still a good chance she rejects him then, let alone he embarrasses himself. I think right? he should come out. <laughs> I think he might solve some problems. He could also try bringing the Facebook back, unfriending her. Wait, well, a few, wait a few weeks. Unfriending it's her. Wait, wait a few Instagram. weeks and try, yeah, yeah, yeah. try to re-add his friend. Or yeah, maybe take it re-add. to another platform. You're out of your mind. If she re adds, you know, you don't you're know. out of your mind, bro. You gotta play the nothing to You've lose. been in a nice relationship too long. <laughs> you have no idea how it, how it is out here, bro. You really don't. I mean, certainly I can't it's not like I haven't been in on again, off again situations. But not six years later. Like, think about a girl you fucked six years ago. I'm trying to think. What What is it? Well, every once in a while, like, I'll see someone on Instagram that you still follow. And I'm like, hey, they're pretty hot. And you'll be like, hey, stranger. Okay, That's my I'm, favorite stranger. Yeah, I'm, I'm 33 <laughs> now, 27. Okay. All right. I'm just, yeah, you know what? All right, I take it back. <laughs> I can, six years isn't that long. Yeah. <laughs> There's I was definitely people like, yeah. six years ago. 
there's definitely people I hooked up with six years ago that I still follow on Instagram. And if shit was going, if you caught me in the right thing, whatever, I might give it a shot again. I'm just saying, if you, if but you, I wouldn't fucking embarrass myself so bad that I'd have to delete my fucking social media. Just write it off. <laughs> just assume it won't happen. Yeah, and if you think true. you think you can try one okay. more time just for the fuck of it, and it won't emotionally crush you or make you feel like shit <laughs> to get rejected again, knowing like that that cringe message is yeah, right above ooh, the new one. That's if you can one. live with that genuinely with I don't yourself, think he can. I don't I think he's that gotten this much out of this message. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Eldest, I this is a one and done. Eldest will surprise you what he's passionate about. I, thought, I was ready to move on 15 seconds in. I, and no, this is before become, I even finish it. I was like, Facebook. You can, you can always double yeah. down. <laughs> There's always a chance for a double down. You know All right. Know. Hey, buddy. You know what? Take Eldest's advice. <laughs> Call in, let us know how it goes. If this works, Eldest gets a raise. I probably gotta head out here soon. I have okay. to get a COVID test for, I'm shooting this thing Thursday. No worries. I have someone coming to my house. Um, why don't we do, um, can you do one more? Yeah. Let's do one more here. And then maybe we'll do one. Maybe Eldest is in a talkative mood. Maybe we'll do one without <laughs> you after that. Um, all right. There's Stavi, the pride of Maryland. What up, man? Oh. How we doing, Love buddy? Love the pod. Love the Ravens game. Recaps from Ronnie. Hope to catch you on tour soon. Oh, well, thank you, my friends. My situation is I'm 28, currently in grad school. Last year I was with this chick for about seven or eight months. I was really feeling her. This was the first time I could kind of picture myself with somebody, see a future. And then school got busy. I did my best to make time to take her out, do fun stuff with her. But shit went south and we split. Three months later, I'm still thinking about her a lot more than I'd hope by now. And it's tough because I just started seeing this new girl. And when I'm with her, it's all good. But then when I'm alone at night with, like, you know, the lotion, the sock, it's old girl I'm thinking about. Sock. Uh, I know this is a classic tale, but just want to see if you could spare any words of wisdom on getting over an ex. Appreciate it, big dog. Thanks for the laugh. Send her a Facebook message. This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send her a Facebook message. We both side at the same time. It's t this is a tough one. I get this one. I think that... Um, what did he say? It said... I did my best to take her out and do fun stuff with her, but uh, shit went south. He fucked it up. Went, basically. I want to know what went south. So he went. He didn't give her enough attention. I think yes. I think and probably his, this is part ego and part feeling. So a lot yeah. of times when someone breaks up with you, it's a very and very common in men to have you know it's sort of like a, a feeling of ego of like my my pride is hurt. It's like well this is something that I thought was unconditionally going to be mine just because I said so and right. it's gone and right, it, it right, made right. me reflect on myself. Absolutely. So I think that there's there's part of you dealing with like how his behavior was and maybe he feels subconsciously that if he goes back to her that will somehow resolve or redeem his bad behavior. But you know look or, he could also really liked her. I think another possibility here is. Yeah, is that he realized he regrets not putting a little more effort in hindsight? Right. What he thought was like too much effort. He's like, I would have given ten times to like continue to be with her. Right. But things are rose colored in the past. You know, For if it sure. didn't work out, it didn't work out. You know, I would say after six months, if the feelings are the same, I would reach out to her. Yeah, and look, I think the I think the real re the the reality here is like. Yes, maybe, but he's also dating somebody, and he says things are going well with her, mm -hmm. but that he, um, you know, things are going well when he's with her, but then when, you know, when she's not there, when that girl's not there, he thinks about the, the girl before him. And I think, before her, sorry. And I think that's just, I really just think he has to not even, don't even give him that, like, if you're still thinking about it, reach out. Because I think part of you will just be like, all right, I'm going to keep thinking about her. I think he has to completely write that off. And in terms of getting back with exes, I think you have to fully go through a breakup, heal, right. and then only when you're fully not in the middle of a breakup, then you can decide, is it worth going through this potentially all over again? Because... You don't want to. You don't want to continue going. You don't want to like go back to the well. And you also want to give this relationship a real shot. I mean, he basically sounds like he doesn't want anything. He's like, "Ugh, I'm dating this new girl, but I jack off to the other girl." <laughs> yeah, well, it's but like, well, that's nice. That is, I, I will say, what has it does help you to date. The only thing that really helps to get over someone, get under someone. Yeah, the, not just on, yes, in a crude way, sure, but it not just get under them. Like, look, I've. 
I still there's there's people there's a girl I've dated where I'm like I I'm in a similar position where I fucked it up and I regret how you know what I did and we were never seriously dating and it was the kind of thing where I always made excuses I was busy I was doing this I was doing that and I just assumed like I dated a lot of girls casually and when we broke up or she when something would happen she would I would be fine and then I found out after the fact oh no I really had real feelings with this girl, and I've hooked up with a bunch of other girls since then, but I still, she's the one I can't get over, and it's not the under, get under someone, it's start a real relationship, start have real feelings with, with an, for another person. Yeah, that's what and I'm that's saying. And that's the hard it, one. The time helps sort of manage the feelings of ego and, and wants versus needs, yeah. you know, and helps you get a better perspective. You know, I just think also, you're right, dating other people also does just open up your your scope, your vision a little bit. You know, sometimes we become hyper-focused on one thing, like that guy in the... Uh, and you the might just be missing intimacy, girl. right? It's intimacy, it's... it's, But it's also, like, not being... It's like when you're working on a joke and you're stuck, you need someone else to come rip you out of the, the place yeah, you're in yeah, to yeah. sort of open up your vision. So he might... Shift your perspective, just, almost. He should also probably be changing up his routine like do things that are different that puts you in different places so that you're not feeling so monotonous so that this girl you're thinking of in the past is the only thing that kind of brings you comfort. Like you should really kind of change up your schedule. Yeah. I mean, that's probably true. Your whole you change, change, get a new name, move to a new country, <laughs> yeah, learn a yeah, new language, haircut. get a new passport, forget about her. Um, I also, th but I do think he's relatively young, right? 28 in grad school and has probably hasn't had that many, real relationships and I think look this is part of growing up and realizing who you really want and what you really want yeah. there's people that it didn't work out with us that in a different context maybe it would have but without those experiences without knowing oh I really liked how she how this person treated me in yeah. a relationship you wouldn't learn about yourself and maybe that's a little bit of that too is like maybe you learned a little bit from this experience about what you want from a partner a girlfriend whatever so just take it on the chin. I think you have to write it off completely and just get over it completely and actually give this relationship, a, the one you're currently in, a, a real try. Um, but maybe this girl you're with right now isn't, isn't it either. And you just have to write it off, try and get better, you know, try and get off of, off of the heartbreak or the regret or whatever the fuck you're feeling. And, um, I, and then just move forward. And look, if you're fully past it, if you try and get through the feelings and... She comes up again. She reaches out. You reach out. That's one thing. But in my experience, if it didn't work out and you keep going back, it becomes a mess. Yeah. It it very, mess very anymore. rarely. And I've had relationships that started on again, off again, um, and were very meaningful relationships to me, but they didn't last, right? So it's like if you're looking for something that lasts, I don't think you're going to find it going back to the well. And if it, do, if it does happen with somebody that you used to date, I think the only way it ever works is if it's almost like a coincidence. Yeah. And you're over it and you guys bump into each other at a completely different phase of life and you're almost different people. So move on, buddy. You're, you're a relatively young guy. You know, keep, keep trying it and I think you'll be okay. We're rooting for you. Um, our pal Mateo, you got to go, buddy. Yeah. Right? If God is still. If God is still por Leo. I, 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 I thank you, my friend. Anything you want to plug? Uh, sure, I'll, I'm on tour. Go so see Mateo, so see funny. Me, uh, it's called the Al Dente Tour. Love it, <laughs> love it. Uh, MateoLaneComedy.com. I had so much fun. I'm so happy to be asked on for a second of time. Of course. Are I you real me? quick, I love that when we I commented on your post, so, so many people were like, "You guys are friends. <laughs> yeah. You guys know each other." <laughs> I know, and I'm like, "Yes." Yeah. <laughs> it is funny that people don't understand the comedians real like. How far and how shitty of like the places we met were horrific. Horrific. The shows we did, like you mentioned, you mentioned Fire Island. It's like I know Joel a little bit. the The way we met was we did an open mic at a gay bar in Astoria. I think it was called the Albatross or something. <laughs> and maybe Lisa was there too. Actually, sounds about right. It was fucking. And it's like people now who are like you know everyone's doing you know we're doing great. Knock on wood, whatever. It's like we used to do. Dog shit. Dog we were shit. in the worst shows you've ever fucking thought of in your life, and that is the bond when comedians make it, start doing well. And we've been friends for so long. It's like we've been through some hilarious. 
well, horrific I think too, things. It's almost a little. It's a little like when when you start to become more like a brand or something, which is such yeah, a gross yeah, term yeah. that people use in LA all the time. But in, in other words, like you become the thing, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's like yeah. Stavros. Like this is. You yeah. fully realized who you <laughs> right, are, right? Right, right, So here you are. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in a way, it makes you almost like a character, like a superhero. Right, so it's like right, right. it's like they, it's like watching. Well, why is Magneto hanging out with the Green Lantern? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like it, it, those worlds shouldn't combine. It's but a crossover episode for people that are is. familiar with us as not as people, but as like types of comedy. As separate, but it's yeah. like yeah, we started together doing shitty, shitty, shitty shows. That's right. Bombing. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Go see Mateo, everybody. Grazie. Thank you for doing it, Mateo. Thanks so much. I had yeah. fun, guys. Me and Eldis are going to do, maybe do a couple more. What do you say, Eldis? Is that cool? Is it, is it rude of me to just no, I'm gonna continue call the Uber podcast? While, while I'm in here. So okay, do great. Your thing. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll just play one. Maybe the next person will get a, will get a little bit of Mateo's uh, wisdom. Faggot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. Elders El- El- didn't deserve that. Oh, El- <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Stav. I wanted to give you a call. I, uh, I'm 24 years old and uh, starting to go bald, mm. right? I'm taking, uh, you know, one of those women medications, keeps or whatever, but uh, not doing much and it's, it's going, you know? So I, I'm starting to accept it and... You know, I guess it, it, it'll obviously affect the way I look, but I think really what it's starting to do is, is just kind of take oh, a hit on my confidence and, and yeah. kind of mental health. So just want to know your, your opinion on that. You know, you, you got a great great head of hair Thank rocking you. the back, but, uh, Absolutely. you know, I, I, I just kind of wanted to hear what your perspective on this is uh, from a mental standpoint. All right. Uh, okay, thanks, Carlos is coming in a minute. Okay, um, quick. I, I just got hair transplants. Yes. They are literally growing in as we speak. You it look takes great. like four to five months. I've never had so much hair. I was losing my hair. It's denial for 10 years. Like, it's a bad haircut. Um, <laughs> it, it is a self confidence booster, and I totally believe in people being able to do something special for themselves. There's, pl- there's a plethora of places you can go that are affordable to get your hair done. You can get loans, you can get payment plans. I would find a really good doctor, and I would go and I would, I would have a consultation because just a consultation with a doctor who is specific specifically working in that field. There's also a plethora of other ways to get your hair to grow besides just surgery. Yeah. This is the most extreme. But um it's trying them all it sounds like. Yeah. So I would I would definitely go talk to someone if that's something that bothers you because it bothered me for 10 years and just having hair new hair for a month I'm going to be unstoppable this summer. <laughs> I love it. I, I love, love you guys. It. I'm going to be in too, and buddy. Out of here. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Um, when does this come out? Next week. Next Monday. Okay, Next Monday. So I can post about it. I will. Bye, guys. Bye, buddy. You heard that. That's good. That's good that we have two different views on the on the question. You know how the fuck I'm rocking with it, bro. <laughs> but what Mateo says is right. If it's something that bothers you, if it's something that you really, you know, that that is really going to affect the way you uh, feel about yourself, then it's worth experience. You know, then it's worth looking into everything. Now, I personally think that it's not that big a deal. Women like a, a bald guy. I'll tell you, you know, like, um, but that's not what you're doing it for. You're doing it for yourself, and it's 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 your own confidence. And if you don't have the confidence, then yeah, think about other stuff. Personally, I love. I don't know. This there's a real power to looking fucking stupid and not giving a fuck, right? <laughs> there's a power to picking everything that society says is ugly and being like. It's it's working though, ain't it? You know, it's, it's there's there's something to confusing people with your very existence. I don't think you got that in you, pal. Um, I don't know. You know, you you have to make a decision. I think shaving your head is a good look. I did that for a while. Um, I don't think you have the ability to pull off the bald pony. That's a fucking high level maneuver. And like Mateo said, maybe you look at the surgery, you know, and you really think about it. You'd be surprised how many people have that, by the way. Um, a, a lot, a lot more. It's it's weird that people don't, you know, men don't really talk about it. It's like shameful to have surgery. It's like you know, women have plastic surgery, but men never do. I know I say this from a place of privilege, but the bald guys really. It really is like a mental thing when you're going. Truly, bald. it it's 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 it, it it does destroy some people. And if you can come if you come across it stronger, that's an even you have even more. You're proving something more if you could just be like, yeah, what? Who gives a fuck? Yeah. But no, most people don't. Yeah. And that is like, look, 
The Rock, Jason Statham, you know what I mean? Like, you can be a fucking, like, a lot of Eastern European people that don't even, guys that don't even think to think, to have low self-esteem. Yeah. Um, but, just, yeah. Just just think of, like, how many cool people there are who are fucking bald. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, like, I don't Nobody know. Nobody gives, that's the other thing. It's one of those things where you decide how much it's going to affect you. Right. Because the world doesn't. Yeah. A lot of people are bald as fuck. Yeah. And, again, it's not even an attractiveness thing because some women actually like it. Yeah, Like, yeah. that's their thing in a, in a weird way. Or, at the very least, it doesn't bother them. Obviously, some aren't. Some, like, want a fucking he full head of hair. Yeah. So, it really is your own thing. It's a, it's the same thing with like gray hair or something. That's such a big thing. Like I mean, I've gotten some gray hairs and definitely but you can, like, whoa, what the fuck? But, but yeah, you can think look of, like a piece of ass. Yeah, yeah. Think like how many just sexy ass people yeah. like there are with like gray hair. Come on, too. Like dude. Men, men and women. Like oh, dude, doesn't a woman with gray hair is hot? Honestly, yeah. um, I'm trying to think who the fuck who's the lady I saw with gray hair that I wanted to fuck. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's it's just men for some reason that I'm thinking about. Clooney. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Clooney looks great. I took off Richard Gere still. Richard Gere. <laughs> of course, dude. Um, I was thinking maybe once... I was thinking my whole life has been zigging and zagging. I cut... The first sign of starting to go bald, I buzzed it. Because I was like, I'm going to get ahead of this. Yeah. I think I was, what, 20 probably? Uh, Yeah. Maybe, maybe a couple years older, but yeah. I don't think... Dude, I think I was 20 because I did it... I didn't even do it at the end of college. I did it like in the middle of college. Yeah. But yeah, 2021, most people were still like, I started thinking about, it started feeling that way. I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to be this. Yeah. And now where, when in your 30s, when people start buzzing, I grew it out. Yeah. So what I think I'm going to do is when I'm like 50, that's when I get plugs. <laughs> I'm going to get plugs when I'm 50 or even maybe 60. Just an old man with long ass hair, beautiful, beautiful yeah. head of hair. So even, even, even like, you're you're shaving your head is like a great example because like for a while it was like damn savage just like shaved a shaved head guy yeah and yeah, you were yeah. rocking it i was rocking and like it. you didn't think twice of it no and it's crazy to think back on that because that was like a whole different look a whole different person almost different look and then and when now, i went completely and then because i kept it like a little bit for a while and then when it even that was like all right man you're bald yeah, i was like yeah. fuck it skin yeah and that was a powerful look too i was yeah. looking good back then um and now Whatever the hell this monstrosity, <laughs> whatever you want to call Hater. that on the, on the top of your head, you know, you're making that work too. And it's hard to imagine you with like any different, any different. I know. Look. I look at my, I look, I was like, I can't believe I didn't have this shit longer. <laughs> I was like, why did I, why didn't I grow this beautiful, but it would, it, it worked at the right time. So yeah. it's up to you, buddy. I don't know. Maybe we should do that. If this podcast hits $100,000 a month, I will get hair plugs. <laughs> That's the official. You heard it here first, folks. Hundred grand a month, I'm getting plugs. Um, all right. Let's do one more, Eldis. Let's finish off. Okay. Let's finish let's off strong here. Let's see here. How about some good old-fashioned career advice? Uh, let's do it. Stavros, you baklava eating motherfucker, you! I love you, man. Uh, I got, I got a question. So, I've been working at the post office now for about a year. I'm 24, and uh, it's it's a good job. Okay. But I don't know if it's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I don't know if I love it enough to keep going down this road, and I don't want to go down this road far enough to where I can't choose a different life path you know what i mean if you got any advice for me I, i'd really appreciate it anyway keep being beautiful and big baby <laughs> i love you bro all right well do you have any other passions you fucking dumbass because <laughs> it sounds like you're in a good spot honestly i think a really good way to go about like look i'm somebody that i did have a very specific passion from the time I was pretty young, right? Like, the first, I started doing open mics when we were in our freshman year of college. I crashed at your apartment in College Park, Maryland, I, oh, so that yeah. we could do DC mics. My first ever open mic was at a seafood restaurant in College Park. You were there. There was me, you, a homeless guy, and eight other <laughs> comics, right? And I knew what I wanted to do from a very young age. And honestly, that was that in and of itself is kind of a it's kind of a gift that 
not a lot of people have, right? Like I sometimes I talk to like friends of ours or whatever who don't like their jobs but don't know what the fuck to do otherwise and it's like I see even even though stand up comedy was objectively stupid, it excited me. I loved it. I couldn't wait to do it. I didn't mind being broke for 10 years. I didn't mind when we moved into this apartment sleeping in a windowless room. <laughs> um and and even the idea that I would waste my time in a real job instead of doing it drove me crazy. I even tried to go back to college. Like, I was in college the whole time, but uh, I stopped. I did stand-up for two years, and then when I was 20, 21, I was like, I have to give... Or when I was 20, I started, and I was like, I have to give school a real shot. And for one year, I quit stand-up, and I was like, fuck it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give, like, school and a real job a shot. And I couldn't fucking do it. It drove me fucking crazy. Do you have something like that, my friend? Do you have something that you have a passion? Or do you just generally think you don't want to get locked in? Because that's also a very regular human emotion too. When you're on a good path that feels okay but not fully satisfying, you're like, well, I got to look at something else. Unless you have something that you fucking love so much that you're like being in, working at the post office is taking away from that. I don't know. I, I actually think the idea that you have to get all your satisfaction from work is kind of stupid. Like that's not everybody. Not every. You know what I mean? Like, um, it, in fact, mo that's not. That's. I'll say this. That's nobody. Even me, who has who this was my dream and it did become my job, and I'm very happy and I'm very you know lucky for that. I don't fuck like. I'm a stunted human being. A lot of <laughs> a lot of entertainers, a lot of people in in pres athletes, you know, entertainers, whatever, even like some something as weird as like a politician or something. People in the public eye, any you know, whatever, uh, artists in general, whatever, who people that really or just career driven people, let's say just even business people that are fucking super successful, people that pour too much effort into their job. They are some of the least happy, least fulfilled people, least um, uh, complex people. And I find myself being in a in a uh, in a situation where I'm very happy with how my career is going, and I've been working pretty hard. These this last year has been really super busy. But to be honest, it's been at the detriment of my personal life, where I don't see my family as much. I don't, you know, I don't have very deep, meaningful like dating relationships because I'm always traveling. I I had to hire my best friend to hang out with him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So the post now, and that brings us back to your situation where the post office. It's actually a pretty good job. Like it's, uh, you know, you get benefits and I'm pretty sure you can retire at a relatively young age. And like, I know people who went into the army at 18 or were, you know, or there's comedian, there's a comedian, there was like a cop at 18. They work for 20 years, they get their pension and they're, you know, 40 year olds, essentially. They're 45 years old with a pension, with retired, whether that's army, whether that's whatever, whether that's post office. Like, I don't know when the retirement age is for a post office worker, but I think you probably could do that. They've, you know, raised a family. They've done other things that were that they found really meaningful. And they're still relatively young people with the time to, to explore things. Or if you don't want to have a family, you don't want to do that shit, do you have other things that you love? Do you have other things? Like, what is this job stopping you from? Are you an artist? Um... Are you a musician? Do you, what's your, what are your passions? And can you do those in tandem with your job? Because I will tell you, no job is going to make you happy. And if you have a pretty solid one that gets benefits and you can retire at a relatively early age, which I believe working for the post office is, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it's not the worst, you know, the worst thing. Now, do you have a passion that keeps you up? Doesn't sound like you do. <laughs> you say you sound like just kind of a generally disaffected guy. But unless there's some other road that you want to go down, I would say stick to it. And, you know, uh, I, I was always jealous of those guys that were like, or even people that had kids young. Like people my age who had kids when they were like 20 or whatever. And they have like a, or somebody who had a teen, like a teen kid. Yeah, your kid's 18 before you're 40. Your kid's That's 18. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> you have a fucking kid. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Like You don't got to be like 53 thinking about like, oh, how am I going to pay for college and shit? Yeah, like, dude. I'm sick let's, of fucking working. Let's say we have kids at like 36. And that's relatively quick. We're 33. Yeah. Let's say we have kids at 37. Yeah. 
Tack on 18 years from that? What the fuck is that? Uh, 65? 38 plus. We're fucking stupid. <laughs> 55. I'm, I'm gonna Google. That's fifty five. Thirty six plus eighteen. <laughs> That's fifty five. That's fifty four. Yeah. 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 yeah, so, right, yeah, cool. yeah whatever. Still pretty old <laughs> as opposed to forty. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Anyway, I don't think you have. Do you have another passion? If not, stick with it. Look up post post office. Um. Look up post office. When do they retire? Retirement age. Yeah. I'd be very curious. Uh. What if, do we got? If you leave with five or more years of service, you are eligible for a deferred retirement benefit at age 62 or later. Mm. If you leave with at least five years but less than 10 years, you're eligible to apply for retirement at age 62. So it sounds like you're a lifer, but oh, I think... That sucks. I, yeah. I, thought you, but, but I guess probably, it's not they, like a cop or something. They probably take you out the trenches and like put you in the buildings or something which yeah i've seen i've seen some miserable looking people and like <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, a guy yeah. in back in baltimore county whenever i go home who's just he looks so miserable yeah yeah yeah. And you can tell he's a lifer he's just riding it out to retirement yeah 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 he's moving like a snail's pace of you're course. waiting in line for well, fucking anything. ever yeah and he just like clearly doesn't really care about customer service, <laughs> yeah. getting the good customer experience. That's a good job to have if you to want to be bad at your job. <laughs> yeah. No one ever gives a fuck at the post office. I don't know. I mean, I mean, the post office seems like such a hard job to get in general. And also, I feel like, I mean, I just think of my dad who like got a job there when he was like late thirties, early forties, or whatever, and. He kind of hated it, but he was, like, kind of old by the time he started. Yeah, dude. If you're 24, like, it's probably such a sick job. You get to, like, just be outside and shit. Yeah, yeah. Little. I mean, I'm sure I know sucks. a couple. I mean, I don't think he's a mailman. I know people who are mailmen who maybe that's why I have this thought, that they were just like, yeah, I'm just going to retire relatively early or something. Yeah. So I don't know. But I, it seems, like, better than, like, sitting in an office if you're 24 and, like, restless and shit. And yeah. Like, I don't know. Just, just exploit it and, you know. Yeah, you get you get like benefits and shit. It seems like was, a decent gig. Yeah, also like, the general idea that a job is going to solve shit for you. Right. It's not true. That's the other thing. No one will take your like post office job away and you're like, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, oh, damn. Well, I got to right. find a new job. Right, right. And, That's, and there's a power to that. There is a total power to that. And it's like yeah, you get to define yourself outside of your job as opposed to what you're asking us about, pal, which is I need a job that defines me. There's pros and cons to both of those situations, obviously, but I think you're in a pretty good space. Yeah. Um, that's going to do it for us, folks. <laughs> I started getting hungry in the middle of that question. <laughs> I had a late breakfast, uh, and I'm fucking, I'm still hungry. So uh, we want to thank our friend Mateo Lane. You know, he's getting a COVID test right now, wherever the fuck he's going. Um, thank you, everybody who called in. We want to talk about Paris a little bit, just to fucking, you know, do the recap. Uh, but also, Mateo is just fat. I mean, his life is so fat. It was, that was my yeah. favorite part of this episode where we started talking about his weird, uh, be him being closeted at Mike or Joanne's fabric <laughs> and his That's weird awesome. fucking grandfather and shit. Yeah. But um, thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Uh, we got we got wrapped up again. This happens sometimes with guests where we just get wrapped up in the in the talk and we don't get to as many questions as we li as we'd like. But we're gonna start getting heavy with the questions. We got we got to start answering more of your fucking queries. But thank you. Keep calling in. Keep listening. Tell your friends. Uh, subscribe to our Patreon if you like the show and you want extra content. We do a bonus episode every week. Uh, we just had Sean Patton on. And I don't know who we have. Maybe I think Karen Fian is this week. This bonus coming up. We think so. We already recorded, but I don't know which order it's going to go in. But anyway, guys, thank you. We love you, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.